everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a really simple beautiful hat. Now this can be worn brim up, brim down, doesn't matter, it's totally up to you. And I'm making this with the hat in a bag kit from Siobhan's Crafts for which I will leave all of the information in the description box below. So in the kit you get everything that you need to make a lovely winter hat. Now obviously this is the the original colourway but there is another colourway that is going to be available on the 18th of October as well so do check that out it's a really beautiful colourway and yeah so this is what we will be making. Now obviously I've used the original colours for this one and then I've just got some other Siobhan's Craft hand dyed yarn to make this hat for the tutorial. So we're using a mix of normal DK and a mohair blend as well. So we're not going to use the mohair blend just yet, we add that in a bit later on. So for the start of the project I'm going to be using a 4.5 millimeter hook and I'm just using the DK on its own for now. So obviously we're just going to start with a slip knot on the hook and we're going to start off making the brim. So I don't use the mohair in the brim itself, I'm just going to be using the DK. So I'm going to start with a chain of 12, so yarn over, pull through, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, nine, ten, eleven and twelve. Okay we're going to work into the third chain back from the hook so one, two and this is our third so you want to yarn over and we're going to be doing half trebles so in the US this is your half double so yarn over insert into that third stitch along yarn over and pull up and you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three of those loops again you're going to do this in every single stitch along so yarn over into the next stitch yarn over and pull up yarn over pull through all three so you're going to do one half treble crochet into each stitch along and then I will meet you at the end of your row. So I'm just doing my final half treble into that very last chain before my slip knot and doing my half treble. So that is how you're looking, you'll just have a small row of stitches and that will be the width of your brim. So to move on I'm going to chain two and turn my work and then throughout the whole of the brim we're going to be working in the back loops of the stitches. So if I turn you can see that you've got little V's or little arrows going along and we're going to be working into the back loops of each of these stitches which is what will give us our ribbed effect for the brim. So we're going to start in the very first stitch here, this pink one as you can see which is at the base of the chain two that we've just completed. So we've come straight up from here and we're going to work straight into that stitch. This chain two is never going to count as a stitch. So yarn over, insert into the back loop of that very first stitch, yarn over and pull up and complete your half treble. So that's one and then again yarn over, go into the back loop of the next stitch and complete your half treble and the back of the next stitch and again you're going to work that all the way along nine and then you'll have one very last stitch which will be your tenth stitch of the row and again you're working to the back loop so on each row you should have ten you should have ten half treble crochets so I'll show you one more time you'll chain two and turn your work and working into the very first stitch just here 
you will then complete 10 half treble crochets all the way along. So one into every stitch and just count out loud just to make sure that you're not going wrong anywhere if you need to. So three and 10. So you're going to repeat that row now over and over again until your brim is as long as you need it to be to wrap around your head. I'm going to be completing mine to approximately 47 centimeters because that is the perfect size for my head. And when you've completed your brim, obviously just test it around your head, make sure it's about right. You don't want it to be loose, you want it to stretch to have to fit you because otherwise it will be really loose and baggy when you actually come to wear it. So I found that about 47, 48 centimeters is about right for my sized head. So that is what I will be doing. So I will meet you once your brim section is 47, 48 centimeters. So I've continued working that up now and my is as long as I need it to be. I've just measured it around my head and you can see we've got these beautiful ribbed detail now for your brim. So mine measures 48 centimeters and that is a good stretch when I put it around my head. Like I say, you do want it to be quite stretched otherwise it will become loose and baggy around your head further on, which you don't want. So now we want to obviously join the two ends together so that we can start working up the rest of the hat. So I'm just going to chain one on the end here, turn my work around and then bring the other end up and obviously make sure you've got no twists or anything and just line up both ends of your project. So you can see you've got your V's again. Oh, doesn't want to focus. So you can see you've got your V's for when you've just finished and you'll have 10 stitches to work into and 10 of the original starting chain to work into as well. So always make sure you're getting the correct corresponding stitch on the other side. So I'm still just going to be working through the back loop of this side of my stitches. So the side that is nearest to me, I'm going to be working, I'm going to take just the back loop. So of this first stitch, I'm going to go through the back loop only and then through the corresponding stitch on the other side. And we're going to be doing slip stitches. So yarn over and pull through all of those loops into the next one. Insert your hook into the back loop and through the corresponding stitch on the other side and slip stitch. So you're just going to work that slip stitch all the way across. So I've got two last stitches to do. one and my very last stitch can be a little bit fiddly there we go and into that last stitch on the other side and slip stitch so now when you open that up you should look just like this okay so I'm just going to pull up that loop just for a second and I'm going to switch to a five millimeter hook now because I'm going to be adding in the mohair as well. So I'll just grab that loop back. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to bring across my mohair, hold it with my working end now. I'm going to be using the two of these together from now on and I'm going to pull through and do another chain. So we've technically now there got a chain of two. So that chain two is not going, oops, is not going to count as a stitch. Sorry, we're going to work our way around now doing treble crochet. So in the US, this is your double crochet. So I'm going to insert into the first space and complete 
my first treble and then again into the next space along I'm going to do another treble and you want to work all of your treble stitches all the way around and you just want to make sure that you're doing them in multiples of two so just count as you go around obviously one two one two and pop your stitch marker into the top of the first treble that you did so not the chain two make sure you pop it into your first treble and there's no right or wrong way necessarily to be as to where you put your stitches just make sure that if if you're doing too many stitches you'll notice that your band will start to bow outwards and if you're doing too few stitches you'll find that it starts to gather up. So just try and place them evenly. I tend to just do one stitch into each row of the half treble and that works perfectly well for my personal tension. So I'm going to just continue doing my trebles all the way around in multiples of two and you can see I'm working with both the DK and the mohair so if you want to just continue going around and like I say multiples of two and then I will meet you as you get back towards the other side so I've completed my trebles all the way around and now I'm going to close off to the top of the first treble that we did so you're Hopefully you've popped a stitch marker in here, so you're going to ignore the chain two and go straight into the top of your first treble and slip stitch. So that now is the first round of the hat with the mohair. So what we're going to do is chain two. And again, that chain two is never going to count as a stitch. So we're going to be doing our first front post treble crochet around this treble just here so you've got your little chain two line there and this first treble is where we're going to do a front post so you're going to yarn over go around the back of that treble and out the other side yarn over and pull up and then complete your treble as normal. Pop your stitch marker into the top of that stitch. We're then going to just do one treble into the top of the next treble. So go through the whole of the stitch and treble and then again. So that's worked into the top of that treble just there and then we're going to do a front post treble again around the next stitch. So yarn over, go around the back and out the other side of that treble. Yarn over and pull up and complete the stitch and then again always move your post trebles out the way just to make sure that you can see the next stitch clearly. So a normal treble into the top of the next treble and then again around the next treble you'll be doing your post stitch. So round the back and out the other side and yarn over and pull up and complete your treble. And you're just going to continue that all the way around. So one normal treble followed by a front post treble. So you'll do that continued all the way around and I will meet you in just a moment to show you how to close off in this row. I'm pretty much back round now. You can see I've got one final treble to work into. So I've just done my front post. So your last stitch should be a normal treble into the top of the previous row. And then you'll have that chain two which you're going to skip and you're going to slip stitch into the top of your first front post treble which hopefully like I can say you will have marked on your last round. And that is, let me just pull that up slightly. So that is how I'm looking so far. <laughs> Obviously with multicolored yarn like this, it is tricky to see the pattern at first, but obviously as you work up, it does become more obvious and defined. 
So I meant to say as well, in case anyone was wondering, on that first round of trebles that I did around the original band, I had a total of 82 stitches. Like I say, yours might be slightly more, slightly less, depending on how big your brim had to be to fit round your head. So this next row now is what we're going to repeat. So you'll chain two, and then around that front post treble from the row below, so you'll be able to tell because it will be sticking up, you'll do a front post treble around that stitch. And then you'll have your normal treble, which you will do a normal treble into. And then again, you'll have a front post treble to work around and you'll just continue that all the way around until you get back to where you started, where you will finish with a front post treble around the front post treble and then you'll have one final treble to work into and then again you'll skip your chain two and slip stitch to the top of the front post treble from the beginning of the round and you'll continue that until you have got approximately 20 centimeters worth of height and then pop it on your head and if you've got just a small gap that you'll be able to cinch together with a couple of rounds of decreases then you're good to go. So I will meet you once you've completed the height for your hat. So I've finished working up my rows now and this is about the right size on my head. Like I say I've just popped it on and I can pretty much gather the top up to near enough close but there is still a bit of a gap. So that is where I'm going to finish working up my rows and this for me measures slightly over 20 centimetres so it's about 20, 20 and a half, 21 centimetres approximately. So what I'm ready to do now is to do a couple of decrease rows. I'm only going to be doing two decrease rows but you've got plenty of yarn left to go so if you needed to do a couple more rows or anything before you decrease rows then you'd have plenty to work with. So I've done my chain two and now to decrease let me just zoom back in a little. So for decreasing I'm going to be working through the whole of the stitch but what I'm going to be doing is working two stitches together. So I'm going to be yarn over, go behind that first front post treble like normal, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two and I'm going to stop there, yarn over, go into the top of the normal treble, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two and you'll have three loops left and then you'll just yarn over and pull through all of those loops. You'll repeat that so yarn over, go behind your front post treble, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two and stop, yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two and then yarn over pull through all three. So we're working two stitches together. So you're going to continue that all the way around and I will meet you as you get back to the other side in just a moment. I've completed my final decrease of this round so I've done it around that final front post treble and the stitch next to it and then I'm ready again to close off to the top of the first stitch that we made so ignoring your chain two as normal and into that first stitch we will slip stitch. Now you might not notice a massive difference at this point as to the, the coming in of the stitches but this next round will really make the noticeable difference. So again chain two and this time we're not going to be doing the front posts we're just going to be doing normal treble crochets two together. So yarn over into your first stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over pull through two, 
and then into the next stitch along, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two and you'll have your three loops again, yarn over, pull through all three. And then again with your next two stitches, so yarn over and insert, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through two and then yarn over and into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two and then yarn over, pull through all three. And again you're going to work that all the way around so you're going to treble crochet two stitches together. As I say we're not doing any front post stitches this time, we are literally just doing normal treble crochets together. So this round won't take you as long as all the others obviously because you've already halved your stitch count and we're halving it again in this round. And once you get to the end of this round and you've closed off again, just pop the hat on your head and just make sure that you think the edges will meet when sewn together. If not, then just do one more round of trebles two together just like we're doing now and it will close that gap even more but also give you that extra bit of length in the body of your hat as well. So you should, like I say, have plenty of yarn to make any of those small tweaks that you may need to. Obviously everyone's heads are slightly different sizes and I am doing this for my own head. So yeah. And as I've said before, you can have the brim up or down. I've taken photos of me in the hat with both the brim up and the brim down. So I like the look of both, but I will probably personally wear it with the brim turned up. So I'm just doing my final one. And then again, I'm ready to close off to the top of the round. I'm going to do a chain one because I'm ready now for mine to snip off. So you can see I've still got quite a hefty chunk of yarn left. So depending on your tension you may have more, you may have less. So I've done my chain one, I'm going to snip my mohair. So I'm only snipping my mohair at the moment. And then I'm going to leave a long tail before I chop the DK because obviously we need to close off the hat and we also need to sew on your button if you've got an elasticated pom-pom. So you're going to need a good chunk of working yarn. So I will now pull that through tighten up and then obviously you will just weave in your end so you'll have some at the beginning and then weave in your mohair end as well but I'm just going to close this off now so I'm going to thread up my DK and I'm literally just going to go backwards and forwards with my yarn so, so I'm going to go through one way and back through the other just through the top of each of those stitches backwards and forwards I should have got rid of that mohair first but never mind <laughs> So I'm not pulling tight or anything at this point, I'm literally just loosely working the stitches through. There we go, so I've worked through the top of each stitch around and then I'm literally just going to pull gently to close up that hole. So you can see I've got my hole, that hole there and I'm just going to close it up so it's quite tight now, you can still see there's a very little hole here, there's a little hole there, so I'm just going to now work a few stitches backwards and forwards 
again across the top of the hat because obviously you're going to have your pom-pom on so you're not really going to see these stitches too much so there's no exact science to this but you just literally want to close the gap that's all we're looking to achieve at this point there we go so I'm happy now that that is all closed up you can see that and now I'm just going to feed my yarn down into the inside of the hat and just turn it inside out for a moment so you can see here I've still got my um, tail mohair tail to weave in and let me just bring back the original hat for a moment so on the inside of this one now to finish off all I did was sew on a button so I've obviously put the button at the very top of my hat and I used my crochet hook once it was all secured just to poke through the top of the hat and pull through the elastic which the pom-pom was attached to and then obviously popped that around the button and that just means that you can get the pom-pom on and off for washing and things so that is all that is left to do on this one is to attach my pom-pom but I'm sure you can sew on your button and then it will just be a case of pulling the loop through to attach your pom-pom so you can get a good idea of what the finished product is going to look like with that beautiful pom-pom on the top so like I say brim up brim down totally up to you but I will see you for another tutorial really soon and thanks as always for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.